So I'll start that over. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Ramsey County CDBG Public Services Programs and Facilities Informational Meeting. It's Thursday, February 16th, 2023. And um, this is part of our annual action plan for CDBG at home as required by HUD. Um, we'll go over, um, next slide, please, Heather. There we go. So we'll be going over, uh, we'll be introducing the housing team um, here at Ramsey County on community and economic development. And then we'll be going over um, the funding information available in CDBG, uh, the solicitation timeline, and then the application checklist. Um, Heather Posthumus will be doing most of the presentation. I'm just here to kick us off. And um, yeah, next slide, please. So we have our wonderful team here with us today. Um, again, I'm Max Holders. I'm Manager of Housing Development and Policy on CED, uh, Community Economic Development. We have Jerrica Gomez, who focuses on our multifamily projects. Um, you'll be hearing and seeing more from her in our afternoon solicitation webinar or informational session that's specifically on housing development. Um, we have Portia Jackson, who focuses on our owner-occupied programs, and then Heather Posh. Postumus, who is public services, programs, and facilities focused. Um, and so um, we'll go to the next slide. And um, so this is not our housing development solicitation. We won't be getting into multifamily here in this hour. So if you're if you were hoping to hear about that, we'll be doing that later in the afternoon. That'll be from 1 to 2 p.m. It's the same Zoom link. And you can find more information on that solicitation on Ramsey County. US slash housing solicitations. Um, this is specifically on CDBG public services, facilities, and programs. Um, there's two eligible uses of housing within one within facilities and one within programs, and we'll get to those um, at that point. Uh, but again, if you're interested in housing development, acquisition of housing, multifamily rehab, uh, multifamily construction, that will be in the afternoon. Right, and I will kick it over to Heather. Good. Trying to minimize that. I can't get it to go away for some reason. Oh, well, there we go. Perfect. All right. So just a little overview of the CDBG program uh, is that it is a HUD award that comes to us as an entitlement community. And uh, I know that we are Ramsey County, however, St. Paul is its own entitlement community. So this is simply going to uh, our, excuse me, focus on suburban Ramsey County communities, residents, facilities, et cetera. So CDBG, the Community Development Block Grants, they have an overall benefit requirement. So these are pretty much at the minimum you have to meet with whatever proposal you're making that at least 70% of the funds are going to be used for benefiting low to moderate income persons. And uh, low to moderate income is going to be 80% of the area median income or less. And then the other thing is that uh, we cannot spend more than 15% of our allocated funds on public service. So um, I don't think that we have used all of our public service allocation that we could in the past. So uh, see what happens this year. And just one point on that. So if our annual grant award is estimated to be $1.2 million, um, no more than 15% of $1.2 million can be used on public services. So that would be you know, whatever that number is. It's higher than 120,000, right? So that's 10%. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so just to get an idea of the various projects and programs that we've offered this past year, um, we did a community center rehabilitation. Uh, we're helping Roseville work on the second phase of their Marion Street Path. Uh, we've continued to fund Homeline as one of our public service projects, and then Housing Link. They're actually a two-year grant um, that started in 2021, so they'll be wrapping up here at the end of the 2022 program year. Uh, there we go. 
All right, so just to get a timeline of how things are going to progress here now that the solicitation is open, excuse me, open. Um, today we're doing the technical assistance webinar. However, if there's issues or questions um, that need clarification, please reach out. Uh, that way we can create an FAQ of those questions that can help others um, should they have that same question. This solicitation will close on March 14th, um, and then we'll start getting all the documentation together and do a pre preliminary review of the solicitation documents um, or applications that we've received. And then we will have that decision made by April 5th about what we're going to recommend for the uh, Ramsey County Housing Redevelopment Authority approval. And so we will be letting those subgrantees that we're recommending for approval know that status around that time. There does have to be a 30 day public comment period uh, in which the communities can give us feedback on the projects that we're recommending for approval. And that 30 day period will end on May 8th. And that will actually be ending with a public hearing. And so that'll give another opportunity for people to show up. And this will be back in person for the first time since pre-pandemic times. So um, if you're looking for something to do, May 8th, come on out. Uh, however, if we have no major objections or reasons not to move forward, May 9th, um, the Ramsey County HRA Board will be uh, voting to approve those projects and programs. And then we'll be able to do official notification letters of approval. Um, part of this process too, though, will be we'll have to send this uh, action plan of sorts to HUD, and they're going to have to approve that plan before we can feel really secure that we're going to be getting the money for what we want. Um, that usually will happen with in June sometime. Uh, I say this way because it's really going to be dependent on how fast HUD and the cogs of government move on that. Uh, but as in the past, our plan is regardless, we would start that funding year as of July 1st, 2023. All right, so if you're looking to access funds for public service programs, uh, they do have to be either new or expanded. And so new has a definition of you haven't received local dollars, so like city, county, or state. Um, funds within the last 12 months. So you could still be receiving maybe that foundation uh, dollars or donations or something like that while you're getting things ready to start providing more service. Um, however, if you're an already existing organization that has an already existing program or activity that they do, uh, you must have a quantifiable increase in those research excuse me, receiving services from you within the last 12 months. Um, and so we'll need in the application, we'll ask about what that quantifiable increase is. Um, so just to give you a not all inclusive list, but um, a list of previously funded programs are food resources. In most cases, that's been um, people coming to food shelves and such. Legal resources, uh, that has been right now focused on mostly COVID-related, um, housing-related legal issues. And so, uh, but these CDBG funds will not be limited to COVID-related as um, if you ever heard of the CB funds, those were specifically for COVID. Uh, then we have a tenant hotline, and we've also uh, helped out with some emergency family hotel stays. So those are all uh, eligible uses. Ineligible would be we simply can't be making income payments directly to individuals or families. And then, of course, uh, we can't pay for any sort of political activity. So... 
All right. Uh, for public service projects, uh, we do a reimbursement, and that's going to be on a per client basis in most cases. Uh, however, if it doesn't work out that way, we'll figure out how to get the reimbursements done. Um, when we do a per client cost, we want to make sure that we're covering a fair share of indirect costs. We also want to make sure we're accounting for benefits for employees that are providing those services covered by the grant. And then making sure to understand that your public services must meet at least one of the national objectives. So that's, again, benefiting a low to moderate income person or area. Uh, and then some of the lesser used reasons are going to be slum light and then urgent needs. So those would be more of conditions that have happened within like the last 18 months, I believe it is. So, all right, public facilities. Yep, 18 months preceding the grant recipient for those um, urgent needs. So public facilities, um, those are gonna be things that are publicly owned or nonprofit owned. The only publicly owned buildings that kind of uh, get uh, neglected, not neglected, that's the word I'm looking for, but left out, so to speak, would be like government buildings. So we can't be doing rehab projects on city halls and that sort of thing. However, if there's some sort of an accessibility issue to those government buildings, that would be an eligible use to provide that improved accessibility. Um, the other thing about public facilities is that they must be open to the public. Um, so just some examples of things we've done in the past. Um, we've worked on some sidewalk projects most recently, uh, playgrounds, and then um, we've also done a community center. So uh, there's lots of options there. And then, um, the regulations that specify that facilities are designed for use in providing shelter for persons having special needs are considered public facilities. So just be aware that your daycare centers, your senior citizen homes, um, homeless shelters, those sorts of places would be considered public facilities. And so that's like one use where this would be housing use that would fall under public facilities. So um, transitional, like Heather said, transitional housing, shelter, housing for special needs could fall under the public facilities category in CDG rather than the housing development system. So a little caveat there. All right. Um, so the, again, this solicitation is going to be focused on those facilities that are non-residential. Um, however, homeless, uh, facilities kind of towed the line. So we're recommending that those come through public service or through this um, solicitation. Um, but it can be used for acquisition. Um, so qualifying an acquisition activity must fall under one of those CDBG national objectives. And it's going to depend entirely on the use of the acquired real property following its acquisition. So it has to be an eligible use for that property if you were acquiring it with these funds. Um, construction could simply be just putting in those sidewalks or it could be in relation to some sort of an urgent need uh, that's plaguing the community. Reconstruction, those could be things like our park equipment is 30 years old and not safe any longer, and it needs to be replaced. Um, if that's in a qualifying low to moderate area, then that could be an eligible use of funds. Um, we do rehabilitation, um, that would be like on those community centers that serve all of the public. Um, some private nonprofit facilities may also qualify. 
and then installation of public buildings or facilities. All right, thing you wanted to add on that, ma'am? No, okay. All right, so some facilities that are, I should say, ineligible uses would be, this isn't for maintenance or repair. Um, this would be for replacement, uh, but again, we're not trying to maintain or repair things already in existence. Um, it can't be used to cover the operating or maintenance costs of a facility. Uh, you cannot purchase construction equipment specifically for the rehabilitation or construction of the public facility. Uh, and then we can't cover any personal items uh, or furnishings with these funds in relation to public facilities. And then our last eligible category here um, is owner occupied housing rehabilitation. So non nonprofit agencies can apply for CDBG funds for owner occupied rehabilitation programs. Um, Ramsey County has traditionally run through its partners, um, two to three of these types of programs. Um, and this could include weatherization loan programs, energy efficiency loan or grant programs, exterior and interior renovation or rehabilitation of an owner occupied home. Again, the same um, objectives are required, as well as the same income um, requirements that Heather spoke about in the public services and facilities area. Um, so it has to serve low to moderate income residents at 80% AMI or below. So some previously funded projects here include Hearts and Hammers, who did um, exterior renovations to um, owner-occupied senior um, homes owned by seniors in the suburban Ramsey County area. Synergy Center for Energy and the Environment uh, runs a weatherization energy efficiency loan program for suburban residents. And then Slipstream um, runs a owner-occupied rehabilitation loan program. Um, so this is an eligible um, activity for nonprofit agencies like these that have been funded in the past. Um, so CDBG funded multifamily rehabilitation uh, will be part of the housing development solicitation, including acquisition of um, a property um, that does not fit a housing for special needs or homeless population would be in the housing development solicitation. I see that we have one thing in the chat. I can read it out loud. Yeah, it, um, would private playground equipment in a mobile home park qualify? If not, could the mobile home park agree to make it open for public use to qualify for funds? Uh, yeah, actually that would be um, as long as that mobile home park is located in a low moderate area of income. If it's not in what they call an LMA, then it would not be eligible for CDBG funds. I hope that answers the question. So the key, yep, the key there, low to moderate income area. Um, in our solicitation guide, and we'll go through this as well, we have a map that shows uh, there's a HUD map that shows where the low to moderate income areas are in our community. All right, so just to give you a little idea of the review process that'll be happening, um, we'll mainly be focusing on four major questions that are going um, to be the bulk of the points on this. So we want to make sure that the project or program that's being um, offered would be cost effective. And it's nice to see if there's leveraging of other funds, whether that's local, state, um, what have you. And then we also want to know how many people you think are going to be served or how many projects are going to be completed with the amount of money that's being requested. Um, you know, we want to see that an adequate amount, if not more, of people are going to be served or that the cost of the project seems in line with um, what's being requested in the way of funding. And then we want to make sure next how uh, your project's aligning with the Ramsey County Economic Competitiveness and Inclusion Plan. 
And so there is a link to that plan. It'll be both in the solicitation guide and I will be pu putting this PowerPoint up. So that's a link there as well in the PowerPoint. Um, I highly encourage you if you haven't already to read through this plan um, because it really is driving the work that we're doing here in the community and economic development team. So we're gonna be looking at those connections there. Um, next, we'll be looking at those national objectives. Um, you know, are you benefiting those low to moderate income persons? Um, are you meeting some sort of urgent community need? Uh, and, you know, again, is that going to be in an, a low to moderate area if it's going to be some sort of a facility project? And then last is what are your um, qualifications? So, you know, we want to know how long have you been providing service or specifically these services? Uh, how many projects has your um, organization completed? And then we also want to know if you've had federal funding in the past. That gives us an idea if you understand the various things that come with that um, federal funding. So. All right, so we'll open it back up to questions. And I don't know, can you unmute everyone? Uh, so if you have a question, raise your hand and then I can unmute you or you can put your question into the chat. Um, and um, And just a reminder that this PowerPoint will be posted online at ramseycounty.us slash um, CDBG solicitation. So I'll put that in the chat. And that's kind of the landing page uh, um, for this solicitation. That's where you will find the uh, solicitation guide as well. So that'll direct you to, um, no, I can't remember the solicitation. Okay, so that's the link there. Um, copy and paste that into your browser. Um, and I'll send you to more information. Um, we will also, any questions we get today on the online uh, webinar, we will post into an FAQ. So that'll be an additional document we'll work on and post online as well. All right, so it looks like um, we have some questions here. First is from Rick. He asked to apply for construction funding. What are the prerequisites? Property already secured, design permits. Um, so yeah, there is for property construction, that would be we want to have site control of some sort. So um, if you didn't have site control at this point, there would be need to be something in the works, like a purchase agreement or something along those lines, showing that site control would be conveyed to whichever organization is working on it. Um, all your kind of planning activities should be done before applying. So if you're not sure that your areas in a, or your projects in a qualifying area, that's something you should be looking into um, if you would have to do income surveys or something like that. Um, that's all stuff that you should do before bringing it to proposal, uh, only because those things have to happen before we can move forward in uh, any sort of construction activity. Uh, any sort of environmental reviews that you do uh, should be done prior to, or at least be in the works um, to submitting an application because uh, environmental reviews, especially around construction are gonna come up. And if things haven't been done and they become, and they take a lot of time, that's gonna put your construction timeline off further and further. Um, and then it's always good to come in with designs. Uh, permits can come as things progress. So that's not something you have to come in with every permit, but it of course would be a requirement prior to receiving money. And the only thing I would add to that is uh, in the public facilities category, 
Um, again, if you're interested in housing construction, that's a different solicitation. That won't be the CBG solicitation. Um, that'll be in the afternoon solicitation. Um, so if you're talking public facilities, uh, construction, um, I would, as Heather said, look into, um, to make sure you understand um, section three requirements, Davis-Bacon labor standards and environmental review. And you can find links to those within our um, CDBG solicitation guide. So hopefully that answers that question. All right, and then Rick, you had another question that you had asked about if we can do a single proposal for acquisition and construction funding. I am assuming that would be on the same project, not two separate ones. If it's two separate, we have no limit on the number of applications that you can put in. So if you have more than one project or program, you're looking at funding. Um, but yeah, those can all be part of the same application. Uh, of course, there's no guarantee you'll be funded for the full amount of both things, but you can certainly put that in. All right. Um, is yeah. there a way to see other groups who have attended today as a way to plan teaming partnerships on this response? Yeah, we can include that in the FAQ. Um, yeah. It doesn't necessarily say what organizations folks are from, so you'll have to kind of see if you know anyone on the list. Because we didn't request that people put their organization. I don't think they can see anything else. Yeah, we're going to, we can plan that FAQ. Yeah. Um, So for the owner-occupied housing rehabilitation, so this is really about a program, not a specific address, and it's um, such as a rehab loan program, a um, uh, weatherization, weatherization program, exterior painting program, um, those types of pieces there. If you're interested in applying for acquisition of a single family owner-occupied home, um, that's actually an eligible category within our um, housing solicitation. All right, which will be in the afternoon. So um, that that website is ramseycounty.us slash housing solicitations. And you can find the notice there as well as the um, more information on that. Um, um, seeing if I understand the second part of that question. And so, yeah, so it'd be a currently owner occupied um, home and it would be eligible for some sort of rehab program. So we're looking for nonprofit organizations who are proposing that type of program. Again, acquisition of a single family home for affordable home ownership is an uh, eligible expense, uh, eligible activity within our housing development solicitation. Just going to, uh, and here's the link to uh, the housing solicitations. Sorry. Oh, no worries. We just have to, we accidentally pressed just panelists, so we, there it is for everyone. Um, so this will be the, if you're interested in kind of comparing the two uh, between the housing solicitations and the CDBG solicitations, um, those are the two options there. Um, and again, um, Heather Posthumus will be the key point of contact for this CDBG public services facilities and programs um, solicitation, as well as, um, and then um, we'll get into the housing development one this afternoon. Uh, this will be posted online. Uh, the PowerPoint will be posted online. The presentation will be posted online. And then we'll uh, work on the FAQ. Um, that will then be posted online. That FAQ probably won't be posted until next week. Uh, but these will probably get up this week. So, and I put my email in the chat so that way you want to email me directly. I'm going to copy and paste it because we accidentally did the to host some panelists again. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I did that too. <laughs> Sorry. 
yep, that's Heather's email. Feel free to reach out. And um, if there are any more questions, oh, we got one more question. Yes, thank you guys. If there's any more questions, please reach out to Heather. Dig around in the solicitation guide, dig a lot around on the website, and um, we look forward to your applications. Thanks so much. Um, sorry, Rick just asked a question. Rick, if you're still online, I see your hand is up as well. Um, Rick's question is, we want to build deeply affordable housing units for currently homeless folk. Is that a public facility or housing development? That'll be housing development. You'll have more different resources available for construction. CDBG actually can't be used for the construction of housing, um, only the rehabilitation of housing. So um, you'll be really focused on the housing development solicitation and that'll have multiple funding sources available for that use. Awesome. So we look forward to, um, Rick, that makes a lot of sense for you to attend the afternoon session on housing development. So we do receive his question, uh, Rick, your question is, we also want to put a clinic on the main floor of that building. Would we apply to both funds? Um, we do see mixed use uh, applications within the housing development. So sometimes a development includes retail space, a grocery store, office space, or nonprofit space like a clinic. And that can just be within the housing development solicitation. If you are applying for service funding in suburban Ramsey County or a clinic, that would be um, within the public services category of this solicitation. The one thing, though, is you would want to make sure that that clinic would be um, up and running within the next year. So because uh, these DDBG funds for like a public service would run July 1st until June 30th of 2024. So I'm not sure if you would be constructing something first and then clinic opening next, um, but it might be that you would apply just in a different funding round for that clinic support. Again, we're happy to stay on the line for any additional questions. Um, otherwise, you'll find all the materials. Um, great. Rick, that sounds like a plan there then. And um, yep, definitely peruse ramseycounty.us slash housing solicitations and look through that solicitation notice for that one as well. And the solicitation guide is going to be a very helpful tool in um, giving more definition to some of the things we talked about, like Section 3, Davis-Bacon, when these things would apply to your projects. Um, for uh, public services, just some more definition on what we mean by a low-moderate clientele, or if you're serving seeing people and we can just presume that everyone is probably lower income, um, there's great clarification in that solicitation guide. Again, I see some new people have popped on. The presentation, the recording of the presentation, and um, eventually the FAQ for any questions asked in this presentation. Uh, will be available online and we'll be posting it at ramseycounty.us slash cdbg cdbg solicitations and that link is in the chat as well i don't think they see the chat if they just oh, okay so i will repost that so that's where you'll be able to find all information heather posthumous here will be um the key 
point, and here is her email again. And then if you believe that your project might be a better fit for the housing development solicitation, here is the link for that. Well, with that said, we will log off now and uh, please reach out with any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you.